back into a little bit of deep madness. So as we've gone over in a couple of episodes previous, you know, I've done a bit of painting. We just did an unboxing for everything Deep Madness. You can see, you know, my giant tower back here of Deep Madness boxes. Um, I've got a lot of stuff to paint. So, you know, Deep Madness is a lot of fleshy, gooey, you know, yucky, you know, evil creature things, you know, with a lot of fleshiness and a lot of blood and a lot of like bubbling something out of skin and skulls and you know that kind of stuff so <laughs> we're going to use an airbrush for this it's going to be a lot quicker we're going to be able to do uh, a lot of little miniatures all at the same time right production painting really and you know there'll still be some brushes in there just for the fine tuning and maybe a little bit of uh, an art coat coating here and there and stuff like that but otherwise I'm, you're going to see uh, an airbrush being used like uh, when you look at uh, this guy here and this is one of the guys I've did previously right um, you know, a lot of everything that was done with him was just all an airbrush and then this guy here right same kind of idea right you know it's mostly all airbrush because there's a ton of them and even the little spiders there was a ton of those and I still have more to paint now, right? Because uh, there's a couple of the characters out there that actually spawn these things and they just keep coming and coming and coming like all these little spiders. And there's not a lot of hit points to them, but they do exhaust your characters, right? Trying to keep up with them coming in. You know, you kind of have to have a balance when you play the game as to the time that you spend killing to the time you spend running and the time you spend investigating Right, in order to actually come all together at the end and beat the level. If you spend too much time trying to investigate, too much time trying to kill things, right, and clear a path, and not enough time trying to run, then you don't make it to the end before, you know, the inevitable end of the level, right? So, um, they throw all kinds of crazy creatures at you. So we're gonna paint one of them today. There's actually three of them, right? And uh, they're pretty crazy looking you know, creature, um, you know, with this great big tongue thing, bloody, anyway, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's, let's just do it. So here we are. This is our crazy creature. Now this is one of three of them. I haven't started anything, but back some time ago, we did do a video on Vallejo's primer of flesh. So he's already got his base of flesh down. Now I'm going to add some black to do the base and a little bit of shading. Here's my air gun. Just add some in and good to go. Give it a little test run here. Make sure that I'm still clean. Not getting any excessive splatter. Get my hobby holder ready. And we're going to start doing the base. Now, while I'm doing the base, I'm going to get some on his feet and between his toes, and that's okay because later on I can bring some flesh back out, and that's just going to bring a little bit more detail in between those areas and kind of make his, his toes and stuff stand out a little better. He's, you can see I'm kind of laying it on fairly thick too, but this stuff actually dries out, like it, it, it smooths out, and it's going to turn out really well for the base anyway. So now I'm going to just very lightly add a little bit of black <clears throat> around his detail of like his spine and in his mouth, you know, where it generally should be a little darker. And then I don't have to play around so much with other paint because it'll already be a bit darker there. Right, so it just turns out because of the layer. 
I think I went a little bit excessive there, but I think this is going to still turn out pretty good. And again, if I get a little bit, say, on his teeth, you know, and whatnot, that's fine because it just makes the teeth stand out more after when I paint them individually, little, little white teeth. Same thing with his claws and stuff. Underneath, underneath his legs, it should generally be a little darker there too. If you think of, you know, like if there was light from above or something like that. So we're just trying to play with that to make things kind of stand as if you're actually seeing them with some form of light above them or something. So next up, I actually take a little bit of Vleo skin tone and just kind of go back over another layer where I just done a lot of the, the black shading, just so the black isn't so dominant, you know, and just to kind of blend it back in a bit. I just want to highlight the ridges and whatnot of where the wrinkle is in the skin to the bubbles on his back or the or the spine or the, you know, stuff like that. I don't want it to be necessarily black. So that's what we're doing here. And this skin tone's just slightly, ever so slightly different than the primer as well. So it's really kind of adding a little bit more to the character as well. Here I am just kind of filling in a little bit of those feet. I got a little bit of spray off there, but that's no big deal. I can fix that. It's the thing about just having a black base. Just a little more black. <laughs> so now, cleaning the brush out again, we're going to get into doing a little bit of the red. Now red's really one of the only other real colors that's in these guys because it's mainly fleshy, gory, bloody creatures, right? So this is just a phileo red. And it would look crazy here. I got some on his arm and some on his chest because I was just giving her. But uh, again, I could just fix that easy with the brush again afterwards. And here, I'm just getting the tongue because this is pretty much it for the red. And there's a little bit like with the boils and the stuff on his back. There's that. Now I'm going to do this. And here, like I said, I'm production painting. So here's the next guy. And then I do have another one here as well. All right, but I've already gotten further ahead with him. So I'm doing one step on each. I think that's going to turn out pretty good. So now moving forward, I'm just going to finish this guy off a bit and get him ready for the next coat. So here we are, we're going to use Citadel shade, and now this is a, a flesh shade, and I almost feel like I'm kind of cheating because this stuff works so great, and I just use it in the airbrush instead of painting it on with a paintbrush, and it just fills in all those little cracks crevices it does a great job and with the airbrush it's kind of cool you can actually you know you get a little too much in a spot you can just kind of put the air on it without more of the shade and just kind of push it around just to fill in those cracks it works really well so here's the second guy and I'm gonna give him a dose there too you can just see all the detail just kind of start to pop. 
And because it's a an, another uh, version of, of flesh, uh, it, it kind of goes with the character anyway. Because like I said, they're fleshy kind of characters. So we got three different kinds of tones of flesh there. We've got the flesh... Um, base, uh, the primer, then we got the uh, air skin tone, and then we've got the uh, Raiklin flesh shade from Citadel. So we've got three tones all together. And I think that looks pretty good, really. Like, how much more do you have to do? Now, using a little bit of some matte white, I'm going to start working on some teeth. So I'll go back to the first guy here because he's a little more dry to work with. Let the other guy sit and start working on the teeth. Now I did mention that there's three of them. The first guy I've already gotten a lot of this already done. You know, I didn't think that it was necessary to sit here and paint three of them, four of them, five of them, you know what I mean, in front of the camera. It's just dragging it on forever. So a couple of them just to show, you know, how to bounce back and forth and how quick it is to use it with an airbrush is, I think, good enough for a demonstration. So there we go. Just a little, just brushing over the top. And it's kind of great, you know, with the black still being there, it makes the teeth pop that much more. Now, the other thing is he's got all these other little boils in the back. I tend to just, all the smaller ones, I make them white. So he's got them everywhere, his arms, his legs. So I'm just going to fill all of those in. So this part actually takes a while. Because they have these little boils all over the place. And there's three of them. So when I'm done doing all of the ones on this guy, i got to do them on the other two too. Just after touching up the last of the little boils in these guys. This guy here on the back. A couple little spots. You know, then we're gonna bust out some corpse pale. It's kinda like another fleshy color. Right, and all I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna use it is kind of like a dry brush. So I'm using this makeup brush here. It works really good for dry brushing. And I'm gonna put that in just again to raise up a little bit of the lighter on the edges of the skin and the spine and the boils and the everything. Now this might look like it's gonna brighten up them a little too much because these are supposed to be kind of like dark, you know, looking creatures uh, but that's okay I've got one final uh, shade to do afterwards that'll darken them back up anyway so after we get this done here now we've got three of them just gonna finish this guy and you can see how that brings out all of the little bumps and the raised spots on his skin and even on the tongue Right, because there is actually some detail there. See, now you can see it. You know, it can't be just bland. It can't be just one color. <clears throat> it's just not going to look good. So there we go. We got all three of them with a light highlighting um, dry brush. Now we're getting ready for just a couple more things and then we'll be done so first of all we still got to finish the tongue now there's these little prickly things and it looks kind of like bone to me right so using Citadel's bone color we're going to fill those all in as well just like the one at the tip and then the other little ones they're almost like thorns
I have to say they're really starting to kind of come together now. Uh, just touching up little bits here and there. There's even a bit of boniness, you know, I figured, you know, just in the odd spot. <clears throat> so I'll finish off these tongues. And then we're pretty much almost there. I think that this guy's done. So now that's starting to stand out a little bit more like you see in the picture. It's crazy too, because there's so much. I got a little extra there, I just brushed it off. There's so much to paint for this game. These three is barely scratching the surface. So I'm not going super crazy with detail and trying to make them look really, really amazing because I just don't have time. So this is just cutting down to the basics, making them look good to play a game. And you know what? I think they look pretty good. And a reasonable amount of time to paint. Like look at the detail, they're still there. And it's not like you can add other colors. I'm not like gonna make certain somethings like purple or something like that, green. It literally is what it is. It's just a fleshy, weird looking creature. So here I'm using the Null Null Oil from Citadel. And this is going to be the final bit of shade. And I'm just going to lightly, from a bit of a distance away, right, kind of throw some of that in there just to kind of darken them back up a bit because they're supposed to be kind of like dark, dingy creatures as you saw from the picture. And there we have it. So it's pretty much finished. And then a couple of simple basic things left to do. Just check them, see if there's anything else to re-highlight. He looks good. He looks alright. Oh, spray. No, I don't know. I think they look pretty good. Like if you look at it compared to this, which again, it's kind of dark, but you know, relatively close to the same idea. So I tried to keep them dark, you know, in the colors and doing the shades and whatnot because it's really a dark creature. So one last thing, we're going to give it a little bit of a clear coat here. This is just a matte shine. It's like 17 bucks from the gaming store. And, well, I already did do them. And you can see now it's kind of like everything's kind of come together. So the last thing to do, the final thing to do, these great big bloody tongues wouldn't be right if they didn't look so let's use some hard coat from set down. And the same thing with those big boils and stuff in their backs. We're just going to give it a little bit of a coat here. So there, as you can see, that's just kind of bringing up a little bit of a shine or a shimmer to his tongue like it's wet. Now you don't want to put too much of this stuff because if you do then it doesn't look wet, it looks like glass. So you got to keep it minimal just so that it gives it that bit of shimmer shine. And that's pretty much it. You know, so there is 
are three atrocities all ready to take on any investigator coming into their area. So, like, subscribe, uh, do all that fun stuff, and until next time, we'll catch you around.